we're now going to create a histogram using the calculator based on the data from uh, page 83, number 121. We already created the uh, frequency distribution table and the stem and leaf display using that data and now we're going to use the same data to create a histogram. Now your calculator should already have the data in a list. Now I already have uh, that data sorted in, in L1 here so I'm going to be using L1. Just make note of whatever list you're using um, and just double check that you do have 41 values in there and yes when you highlight the last entry and it says L1 parentheses 41 that indicates you have 41 entries. Now one of the things you want to double check before you uh, graph histograms on your calculator is to see if you have any um, equations in uh, the calculator already and that could uh, mess up your view. So if you press this button here that says y equals on it, you see I have this equation in here. I don't want that there when we graph histograms. So I'm going to press the clear button and it's going to erase it. And one of the things that students always um, may forget to check, if you scroll downward, you see I have another equation in there and it wasn't visible before but you had to scroll down to see it. You want to clear that out too. You want to clear anything that's in there, and that's the last entry. So um, now we should be good to go. So to set up the calculator for viewing this histogram, we're going to press the window key. So we press window, and we're going to set up the values here on this window screen as follows. X min is going to contain the smallest class boundary. Well, remember our smallest class uh, our smallest value was 40, so our smallest class boundary was half less than that, or 39.5. So that's what we're going to put in for x min. x max is going to be our largest class boundary, and you remember from that, that from the frequency distribution table, that was 99.5. x scale is going to be the class width. And the class width, don't confuse that with number of classes. The class width is the size of each class, and that we figured out was 10 when we made the frequency distribution table. Um, y min, I set this up to be negative 5. Some professors don't do that. The reason why I set it up to be negative 5 is because it gives us space at the bottom of the viewing window to see the words that come up on the screen and you'll see it when we graph it. Um, what we put in for y max is our estimate of what the largest class is, uh, the, large, the, the largest frequency is for any one class. And uh, since we already built our frequency distribution table, we know that the highest frequency is 10. Now sometimes uh, we don't already have a frequency distribution table built. If we don't have it built yet, we may have to come back to this window screen and uh, adjust our Y max. We may have chosen this wrong. So this is like a guess and check activity. So just for the time being, I'm going to show you what it would look like if we picked a number that's too small. And then I'll show you how we can come back and fix that. Um, y scale and X res are going to stay at 1. Okay. Now, after the window is set up, we're going to identify that we would like to, be, to build a histogram because there are a number of graphs that you can build with this calculator. The histogram is just one of them. So, we're going to go to this stat plot in blue here above this Y equals key by pressing 2nd and then the y equals key and there's a number of um, there's three plots that we can have on at any one time all of them here are off we want to turn one of them on so the first one the one that uh, the cursor is on will be perfect so we're just going to hit enter on this and right now off is highlighted we want on to be highlighted so we're going to hit enter 
on on and there it is it's on now okay now we're going to use our arrow down key to identify the type it's now flashing on this um, dotted graph this is called a scatter plot that's not what we're building today we're going to slide over to the histogram and hit enter on the histogram that's the graph that we're going to build today now we're going to move down to move your cursor down to X list and change the list to whatever list your data is in my data is in L1 and frequency is supposed to stay at 1 now if for some reason you start uh, typing here and you're getting letters instead of numbers you may have to hit this alpha key and turn off letters oh, too many Let's, if you turn off there okay so when you uh, press the alpha key now you should be able to put in a number if the alpha key is pressed then uh, when you press a number it's going to come out as a letter and you don't want that so go back delete that one letter and this is exactly what you want your screen to look like right now. And then when this is all set, so uh, the two things that we did is we set the window, we set the stat plot, and now we're going to press the graph button. Okay. Now this is a histogram. What I made, um, I made an error before on purpose because I wanted to show you what it would look like if we chose a Y max that was too small. And this is what it ends up looking like. The tops of the histogram get cut off. So if you ever um, choose incorrectly on your Y max, you could always come back to window and choose a bigger Y max. So if we pick 15 and then press graph, okay now we see this histogram in full view now once you're here looking at the histogram one of the nice things you can do with this calculator is examine the data so if you press this trace button right here now here's the text that I was telling you was going to come up below the graph and if we didn't put a negative 5 for y min we wouldn't have this space here we'd be th th these words would be on top of the graph itself and that's why I like to use a negative 5 now you see this flashing dot above this first bar well the information at the bottom of the screen pertains to this first bar and what it's telling us is that the class boundaries for this first class go from 39.5 to 49.5 with a frequency of 5, which is a nice way for us to check that our frequency distribution table that we created before this is correct. Using the arrow keys now, we can move along all the bars of the histogram. So watch if, if I move to the right, now I switch to the next box, I see the um, class boundaries down here change to 49.5 to 59.5 and the frequency of that class changed to 8 and we can see exactly how this mirrors what we put on our frequency distribution table and we go through all of them we have exactly six bars which represent the six classes which corresponds to six different rows of the frequency distribution table now one of the things that we can do now is answer the question that was being asked in this particular problem. Um, the first question, how many test grades are greater than 89? Well, if we look at this picture again, test grades greater than 89 would be anything um, in the class labeled from 89.5 to 99.5 those grades are greater than 89 so the value for n which is the frequency for that class is 4 the answer to that question would be 4 um, what percent of the test grades are greater than 79 so what we can do is scroll backward 
Okay, greater than 79, we have to add up the frequencies of the last two classes. So we add up 9 and 4, that's 13. And we can check out what percent is 13 out of the total. Well, let's go back to our regular calculator screen now. You can always get out of the view of the calculator's histogram by quitting, and that quit is above the mode key here. Second quit, 9 out of 41, 21.95, so multiply that by 100, 21.95% will be the answer to that question. And we can answer uh, the rest of the questions too. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to put this histogram that we drew on the calculator, we're going to translate it to paper, give it a title, give it, um, label the horizontal and vertical axes and mark the horizontal and vertical axes with numbers as well. And then we will be done with this problem.